a lot of opinions. Okay. We <laughs> no, no, tell us. I just think like without meaning any offense, men should not be the standard by which we measure things. Um, we were talking mm. about this in one of our book clubs, actually, about how, like, you know, I find myself, whenever I write Slack messages, always putting a lot of smiley faces and, like, you know, I don't want to come across as rude and I'm really trying to be nice and, and <clears throat> pardon me, and, um, you know, speak in, a, speak in a very polite way to everyone. And I've noticed that none of my male colleagues do this. And so I was like, ah, oh, should I change the way I write my messages? Mm. And then there was a girl who was like, no, why don't they change the way they write their messages? Like, why do we have to change? Why is what we're doing incorrect and what they're doing right? Good point. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and makes actually, sense. that's why I also write uh, smiley faces on my messages. Yeah, yeah. I write smiley faces, but I don't write polite messages. But <laughs> <laughs> but everyone so can be the way face. they want to be. Everyone can be their the way to be. Yeah. And I, th I think it's like really important to understand that also, yeah, like the model of power is a kind of masculinity which is kind of not healthy you know men who don't cry who are always who are not polite who just take up space and you know um it's not exactly healthy either so i think we women we do need permission to also embody masculine qualities like we should be able to express anger to also you know be more brave or daring or courage all the good things and then I think men should also be able to take some feminine aspects um, of being female so we can be fully human is the point. Like Not that we should... Empathy, I think, is one of the qualities that are uh, stronger in, in women mm -hmm. than That's the, uh, the weakest are in, in men, for example. Yeah. And and empathy is going to get everyone uh, everywhere. <laughs> I yeah. think it's going to solve a lot of the world's problems. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's, it, I, I like the, the the way you you explain it. Like, okay, if men were the standard that everyone should be measured on, so it would feel for me very weird as is if I we wear a t shirt that says. Uh, brown people can do the same as white people, or something mm -hmm. like that. Will be like okay, so that means that they are the standard, or they can do uh, the exactly. only ones who can do things correctly. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And also like yeah. keeping in mind that that standard is really toxic uh, about men, not about, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so like why, not even men should live up to the standard. Like, you know, we're holding men to a ridiculous toxic masculinity standard. So how do you feel as men? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> about this. I mean, I feel sometimes, uh, and I was discussing uh, some, or discuss sometimes with my wife because it, she likes also to read a lot of feminist books, but sometimes my, uh, feeling is sometimes that those books sometimes are just how's it called uh, criminalized not criminalizing like but like antagonizing men mm -hmm. uh without really taking in account why we are the way we are because mm -hmm. it's just sometimes simplify that it's because of the patriarchy or toxic masculinity but it doesn't really i mean we, we, sometimes as men we are trying to understand also, why women behave the way they behave, why sometimes they have a bad mood, why sometimes they didn't uh, feel appreciated when when they do something and all and all of those stuff. So I feel that sometimes from those or, or authors, if how much they try to understand why may men behave the way they behave, like such as stuff like the, the hierarchy uh, systems that we have. But why men are so hierarchical and so on? And they're like, I don't know, but it's good to really think why. It's not because I think toxic masculinity, but if you go back to primary school, if you see the dynamics between boys, you will have the boy who will be like, let's say, the alpha or like the, the charismatic one, the one who everyone listens to, and you have the bullied one. And, the, and you don't want to be... Um, embarrassed in front of the one who appears to be a leader. And then already in that dynamics, you will have already some sort of invisible hierarchy. And that builds up through the years, through the years. And then you know that if you show vulnerability at some point, since you experience it as a kid, you hide your vulnerabilities to not change your position on this invisible hierarchy that exists. And I don't know if, for example, if those behaviors or those social situations are being taken in account. When, from the perspective of, of women. I think uh, Bell Hooks, the feminist Bell Hooks, mm -hmm. she wrote a very good book a good, uh, mm -hmm. uh, outlining exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. called 
something like masculinity, men and masculinity. Sorry, I don't know exactly the title, mm-hmm. but she's got one. It's the same masculinity in spell hooks. And she also says, she she talks about exactly what you're talking about. Like if there is, um, you know, if men are as children, if they show emotion or if they if they show the, their emotional side, they are... Um, they are bullied and things like this and then this causes a certain thing but I think that's a really good like feminist thinker on masculinity uh, too so there are some really good books about this I think the uh, the thing about feminist books is um, that of course we are all aware of how um, the patriarchal systems mm-hmm. um, and these toxic systems also affect men the difference is that, you know, in the hierarchy of things, you know, you've got men and you've got women and all the way down there, you've got like a disabled, very poor black mm-hmm. woman or something like this. Right. Mm-hmm. So you've got this hierarchy. So then for women to um, they they have their own struggle, which we have to be like in solidarity for mm-hmm. and fight for like rights and abortion rights and all these like really like life mm-hmm. Uh, life-threatening things and men's lives are also threatened by war and all of these things as well and I think what's missing from the men's side is that men are not so open to organize because of organizing means talking and showing vulnerability Mm. so how do you get over that Mm. as a man or as a a group of men or men with other male friends you know because you also need to organize Mm -hmm. Uh, but we as women, we can do some of it, but we can't do everyone's job you know, yeah. for them. You know what I mean? But I think it is definitely uh, taken into account by feminists. And, and and I think that's one of the big misconceptions about feminism. It's just like, oh, it's just against men. But actually, that's not true. Mm-hmm. Like, absolutely not. Like, it's a, a certain system we're living in, which is, I think, just damaging to everyone that doesn't allow men to be vulnerable that doesn't allow women to be angry you know Mm. so many things and we're all affected by it so like we should all try and uh, embrace our own humanity and and fight our our fights amen (laughs) 